You know, ladies and gentlemen, in the sports vernacular, we always say gone way too soon. Now, this guy was an example of this, one of the most popular players in what I call the National League World Series Championship era of the late 70s, early 80s, uh, a very good utility player. And uh, unfortunately, not known for his hitting, but like I said, a good all-around player, teammate, and, and a motivator. The, the, the guy they called Vuk, John Vukovic. Now, John Christopher Vukovic, nicknamed Vuk or Johnny Vuk, was an American pro baseball utility infielder, manager, and coach in MLB. Best known, again, for his years with the Phillies, although he did win a World Series title with the Reds in 75. Uh, he played in parts of 10 seasons between 70 and 81 for the Phillies, Reds, and the Brewers. Vukovic is all known, also known for uh, having the lowest career MLB batting average, 161 of any non-pitcher with 500 or more at-bats. But he wasn't uh, there just for uh, his bat, of course. Uh, you know, a very, very good player who could be positioned in any place in the field. Now, he was Serbian, uh, born in Sacramento, California, and grew up in Sutter Creek, California. Sounds like a good place for NHL players. His father was a baseball coach for the local Amador High School, where Vukovic attended. Now, the big deal, of course, uh, he was traded along with Don Money and Bill Champion by the filler at Phillies and the Brewers for Jim Lonborg, Ken Brett, Ken Sanders, and Earl Stevenson on Halloween 72. He eventually became a backup for the 75 Reds World Series winning team, although he was traded back to the Phillies before the playoffs began and also for the 1980 Phillies World Series uh, winning squad. He actually began the 75 season as the Reds' starting third baseman, but was benched in early April after hitting only 250 with three extra base hits and only one RBI. The Reds then moved Pete Rose to third base to platoon Dreesen and uh, George Foster in left at first, but Foster eventually won the left field job full-time. Vukovic spent the remainder of his time with the Reds as a late-inning defensive replacement before being released in May 75, but again, I do qualify him as part of that 75 uh, title winner. He batted above 200 only twice in his 10-year career, appearing in 277 games, hitting six home runs, with 44 runs batted in, and a career 956 fielding percentage. His career batting average was 161, the lowest in Major League Baseball history for any batter or non-pitcher, again, with over 550 plate appearances. Now, during the second period of playing with the Phillies, he became beloved to the fans even though he seldom appeared in games. He was seen as a blue-collar player, and the ordinary fan respected his effort. Again, played with the Phillies 70 to 71, the Brewers 73 to 74, the Reds at 75, back with the Phillies from 76 to 81. He was also a manager in Chicago in 86, and with the Phillies in 88. And as a coach, he was a he was a, a representative in 82 to 87, and with the Phillies from 88 to 2004. And of course, a deserving member of the Philadelphia Phillies Hall of Fame. Now. After his player career ended, he joined the Cubs as a coach. In 86, he was manager for a day after Jim Fry was fired. He split that day's doubleheader. In 87, he rejoined the Phillies, and after Lee Elia was fired with nine games to go, he took over as skipper going 5-4 and four the rest of the campaign. Now, Vukovic stayed with the Phillies as a coach from 88 to 2004 and was considered for the managing job when Terry Francona was summarily fired in 2000. The job eventually went to Vukovic's childhood friend, the great Larry Boa. Unfortunately, he was diagnosed with a brain tumor early in the 2001 season and subsequently had surgery. He would return later that year and remain on the coaching staff until being named special assistant to the GM following the 2004 season. Along with Boa and Mill Thompson, Vukovic is one of just three Phillies to go both the World Series as both a player and a coach for the club. Now, in late 2006, he began, he began exhibited symptoms similar to his previous tumor. He eventually died at Thomas Jefferson University Hospital in Philadelphia at the age of 59. And just a short while later, the Phillies, uh, helped by my great pal uh, uh, in New Brunswick, uh, Matt Stairs, uh, and uh, uh, that, was, that was a big loss, but I know all Phillies fans and teammates were thinking of him. In 2007, the Phillies honored him by wearing a uniform patch on a right sleeve with the nickname Vuk. At the time he's dead, Vukovic was a resident of Voorhees Township, uh, New, uh, New Jersey. So we're going to do, do, again, a quick look at what we're talking about from a, from a baseball uh, standpoint. 
Now, again, the native of Sacramento um, broke in with the Phillies in 1970, and that year he batted 125 on eight at bats. 71, he had uh, 14 RBIs, 166 average in uh, 74 games played, 233 at bats. Milwaukee in 73, uh, he hit these first home runs, two home runs, nine homers, with a 125 average. In 74, three home runs, 11 RBIs, 188 average. But 75 in that shortened season, he broke the Mendoza line with two RBIs and eight hits and 30 at bats. 76 with the Phillies, he went a one for eight. 77 with them, he was 0 for two. 79, three for 15. Again, broke the Mendoza line. 1980, uh, 10 for 62 with a 161 average, five RBIs, and with only one at bat in 1981, he wrapped up his career. Now, uh, the um, uh, the idea about Vukovic, uh, he did uh, be part, he was part of the 80 team, but wasn't called uh, in the play. And, you know, not too bad as a, as a fielder. He, uh, he was uh, pretty strong, only committed uh, 22 errors in his career in 212 games, so not, uh, not uh, too, too bad. Now, Vukovic, what I do remember about him, Sometimes you become in the late innings, and being the Phillies were in the uh, NL East with the Expos, I remember there was a road game that Montreal had played, I think it's uh, late summer of 1980, where Vukovic was called up to bat. And I thought for sure that this guy was having a birthday, but every time he played, the Phillies uh, faithful, as I called them, were really, really uh, behind him. And like I said, he... Uh, Ironically, ladies and gentlemen, his whole career he only walked twenty nine times. So I mean, it's uh, it's weird. By the way, his uh, OPS was a four twenty five, and like I said, he was there because he was a good teammate, a good uh, bench person, and that would that's what paid off when he was a coach and later a manager because everybody enjoyed his presence. You know, you can make Major League Baseball and make a contribution. You know, you can't uh, stay. In Major League Baseball for 10 years with only 277 games, unless people like you. And the fact was, you know, we have these, what they call the bullpen coaches. Uh, the Yankees had quite a few and the Dodgers, different people. He was sort of an all-around player because I heard stories through different people that knew about him. He was giving advice to players about certain things about the game, the attitude of the game, because he knew he wasn't a great hitter, but the attitude he had was very, very positive. So, I mean, you know, be it as it will. He, if we're remembering him 54 years after he made Major League Baseball, he must have meant something. And to the Philly faithful, again, he means a lot. So this podcast is for the Philly Phillies fans. If you like what we're doing here, with our NL East uh, podcast, talking about the, the various um, members of what you call the taxi squad, uh, as Tommy Hutton uh, called it many years ago. Uh, give us a like, comment, subscribe, or share. But like, like we say in baseball, you got to swing for the fences. I'd like to have been there when Vukovic for hit his first home run. That would have been an amazing day to see someone is, with a light bat like him hitting a home run. So t- thanks for listening, ladies and gentlemen. And don't forget, uh, March break in Canada. Kids have a great time. Uh, convince your dads to come listen to the various podcasts that we're doing on our channel of their heroes, and you'll make my week. Have a good one.